8.55 Eastern Time, and Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. With Hitler's peace offer expected before the end of the week, either directly or through the mediation of Mussolini, voices were raised both in London and Paris today, urging that it shouldn't be rejected without careful study. In London, it was the once powerful voice of former Premier David Lloyd George, who now represents a party of only four members in the House of Commons, but found scattering support from members of other parties. What Mr. Lloyd George asked was that if an offer came through Italy or Russia, those powers should be regarded as neutrals and that, quote, we should not come to a too hurried conclusion, unquote. Mr. Chamberlain didn't seem to think that any such proposals would be offered, but promised that the British government would not be in a hurry if the proposals required serious consideration. This seems to have roused some suspicion that the government was weakening in spite of Mr. Chamberlain's earlier remark that no mere assurances from the present German government could be accepted by us. For later in the day, an official statement was issued that the reply to Lloyd George did not mean any change in the attitude of the British government, which, as Mr. Chamberlain put it, is that the rule of violence must cease and the word of governments once pledged must henceforth be kept. Lloyd George himself had said that if peace depends on the word of Hitler, we must proceed till we get some more assured guarantee. In Paris, 43 members of the Chamber of Deputies who belonged to the lately dissolved Communist Party and now to its successor, the Workers' and Peasants' Party, said that there should be no offhand rejection of peace proposals without looking them over. This immediately stirred conservative papers in Paris to denounce the ex-communists as agents of the enemy, and they talked of a trap laid by the Coalition of the East. This is stronger language than the British are using about Russia at present. The Russians, however, are using strong enough language about England. Now that Russia has brought Estonia under complete control and is apparently about to do the same with Latvia and Lithuania, the communist newspaper Izvestia publishes an article accusing England and other capitalist powers of trying for many years to convert the Baltic republics into vassal areas. Details are not given, but presumably this refers to British operations through the Baltic states against communist Russia 18 or 20 years ago. At any rate, what Russia is doing this week is represented as liberation of the Baltic states. In Berlin, German officials say that the talks of Hitler with Count Ciano, the Italian foreign minister who has now gone home, dealt not only with a peace offensive, but with a possible intensification of the war if the peace move is rejected. They speak, too, of measures for the preservation of common Axis interests. And the German newspapers suggest that if the peace offer is refused, Italy may enter the war. But all this talk of what Italy may do comes so far from Berlin. Rome is very reserved about it. The Senate was in recess today on account of the death of Senator Logan of Kentucky, so Washington had time to digest the speeches made yesterday for and against the neutrality bill by Senators Pittman and Bora. Mr. Bora's speech, it was felt, might have inter influenced a scattered few wavering senators, but administration leaders still expect the bill to pass whenever it gets to a vote. The negative policy of this bill is, of course, supplemented by the more positive program adopted by the Inter-American Conference, which was discussed on this network earlier in the evening in a broadcast from Panama by Under Secretary of State Sumner Wells. The conference decided, he said, that as a matter of continental self-protection, the American republics were entitled to keep American waters free from belligerent activities. But it looks as if there will be some difficulty in enforcing the neutrality of this 300-mile-wide belt of ocean around the Americas. We're entitled to it if we can get it. But how are we going to enforce this very great extension of national sovereignty over the high seas? Mr. Wells says that the 21 American republics acting through the president of Panama will make a joint representation to the belligerents, tell them what we want. But suppose they don't do it. President Roosevelt was asked that today at his press conference and replied that the appearance of a belligerent vessel inside the safety zone would not involve a question of war. That is, we tell them to keep out, but if they come in anyway, it doesn't yet appear what we intend to do about it. More hopeful were the promises that American shipping facilities to Latin America will be increased. We'll have plenty of ships to spare after the neutrality bill goes through, for it would seem to leave little room for American seaborne trade with even the neutral nations of Europe. And Mr. Roosevelt said today that at the next regular session of, con session of Congress, he would ask for $400 million additional credit authorization for the Export-Import Bank to finance our trade with Latin America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.